Welcome to the lesson on materials and methods. Let's get started by taking a look at where we are in our project management approach to writing this paper. So we are in the executing phase as we were writing the introduction. And as we are executing, remember, we're also controlling and monitoring. So we're looking back to our writing plan, uh, the outline that we constructed earlier, and we're deciding if we're on track and we're deciding if we need to make any changes. So these are the, the controlling and monitoring steps of the process. Let's look at the learning outcomes for today's lesson. At the conclusion of this lesson, you will be able to explain the purpose and content of a materials and methods section. You will be able to explain what information to include to make a complete description of materials and methods. You will be able to provide the appropriate level of detail, and you will be able to provide correct references as needed. Also, you'll be able to avoid the common problems that happen in the materials and methods section. Let's begin by taking a look at the functions of the materials and methods section. So the first function is to detail the materials that you used in the work. So a lot of you in this course are going to be in uh, life sciences, and so the materials that you choose are very important. You know, the study organisms are very important because different species obviously are different. Different strains or varieties are going to behave differently than other ones. And if you're in some other area of science, physical sciences or chemistry, for example, the materials are also very important in your case. So the, one of the main functions is to very specifically explain which materials you used in your study. You're also going to describe your experimental methods. And uh, we'll get into some details later about how thoroughly you should describe these methods. But it's really important to do so in a way that's at least thorough enough that another scientist in your field could go and replicate the study. In other words, they could take your materials and read your paper and, and do the same experiments and come up with results that are very similar, if not the same. Also, the materials and methods section is going to give context to the results that are coming later. And so the, uh, when the readers are looking at a figure, and they want to understand how that figure was generated, they'll go back to the materials and methods and find the appropriate paragraph and read it, and then they'll understand that figure better. It's also going to assure other scientists that you did the work in a valid and rigorous way. That's very important. Reviewers are going to look very carefully at how rigorously you carried out your experiments and if you used valid materials and valid methods to get these results. And the final point, which I've already mentioned, is the function of the materials and methods section is to allow others enough information to reproduce the results. So what should you put in the materials and methods section? So for materials, these will be things like drugs, culture media, buffers, gases, apparatus, locations that you studied or specific sites. Um, it could be patients or subjects, experimental materials, animals, microorganisms, or plants. In terms of methods, you need to include information on your experimental design. So mention your independent and dependent variables, your experimental and control groups, and any other pertinent information like randomization. And also talk about the procedures, what you did, how you did it, and sometimes you need to explain why you did it. Sometimes that is obvious or it should be in the context of the paper, but sometimes it's not obvious and you need to add a little bit of an explanation for why you chose this particular method. Let's look at some tips for writing the materials and methods section. Now in terms of writing style, this section is the only section in the paper where the passive voice is preferred. And so if you don't know what I mean by passive voice, I'll have you go and look that up. But it's basically the way that you choose the verbs Secondly, in the materials and methods section, you want to organize this section using subheadings. 
So that's going to greatly help your reader follow what you're doing and help them quickly find information when they want to refer back to this materials and methods section. So break it up by subheadings and also think about organization of this section based on the objectives that you presented in the introduction section. And those objectives came from your research question. And this is going to help you decide how to organize the paper and how to choose which subheadings you're going to list. So materials and methods are pretty straightforward, right? So you might have this question. Can I just copy and paste my materials and methods from a previous paper that I wrote when I'm doing the same things as I did before? Well, I don't think you should do that. Now, as we mentioned when we talked about plagiarism in materials and methods, a word-for-word -word sentence that appears in more than one publication is not necessarily plagiarism. However, I do suggest that you don't just copy and paste. I really suggest that you write a new materials and methods section every time you write a new paper. Then in the chance that some of the sentences are the same, you don't need to worry too much about that. But I do recommend writing it freshly every time. Some backup for this approach is from the Committee on Publication Ethics. And they have this quote on their website that says, use of similar or identical phrases in method sections where there are limited ways to describe a method is not unusual. In fact, text recycling may be unavoidable when using a technique that the author has described before, and it may actually be of value when a technique that is common to a number of papers is described. Editors should use their discretion and knowledge of the field when deciding how much text overlap is acceptable in the methods section. The reuse of a few sentences is clearly different to the verbatim reuse of several paragraphs of text. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well the materials and methods section is so descriptive, how can I possibly mess it up? You know, what could go wrong? Well, there are a few things. You could provide too much detail or too little detail. Yes, it is possible to provide too much detail. And that's, uh, you know, that's when it's going to become confusing to the readers because they don't know which things that you're saying are important and which things that you're saying are not important. Or it might just be obvious. You don't have to explain how to make uh, a sucrose solution. You know, people should know how to do that. Another way you, that could go wrong in the materials and methods section is not telling the purpose of an experiment if it's something that's unusual or not obvious. You know, if it's something that you invented, no one has done it before, you might need to give a little bit of an explanation for why you're doing this method or procedure. You could also leave out information. And this is different from too little detail in that you just completely didn't tell about that part of what you did. Um, so it's just completely missing a paragraph or a few sentences. Or you could give incorrect information. And I actually had this situation. A student of mine uh, came to me one time and he said, I'm trying to grow these plants and I'm using this method from this previous publication. And the plants don't look healthy at all. There's something wrong with them. And so I said, okay, let me take a look at the paper that you're getting this method from. And I started reading it, and I read the nutrient solution composition. And in one of the micronutrients, they had a typo. And this typo resulted in my student using 100 times more of a certain mineral than they should be using. And so, of course, 100 times more is in the toxic range. And that's why his plants were not growing, because uh, he was following this recipe from the publication, but it was incorrect due to a typo. 